we've just got to the end of January, haven't we? And which is possibly when people will have been doing a detox or something. Um, and our next speaker, um, hopefully, is going to have something that's relating to this and not going to make me look stupid, but uh, well, or, or more stupid, shall I say? Um, anyway, without further ado, Karen McClure can come up to the stage and talk to us about detoxifying detox. Right. Um, hello. Just a first little disclaimer to start off. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not even an unlicensed nutritionist. Um, anything I say that could be interpreted as advice, please disregard. I'd hate to be accused of misleading the public or anything. Um, so it's the start of a new year. You know, new year, new you. Time to leave behind the baggage from that god-awful thing that was 2016 and move forward. Um, but after all that Christmas eating, how do we do that? Where do we even start? Well, you have an abundance of options. Um, this time of year, it's easy to feel bombarded and surrounded by celebrity diets or detox advice, fad diets. It seems like everyone has a quick fix to getting healthy. You could go gluten-free, you could go sugar-free, grain-free, or, you know, fuck it, just give everything up and just eat kale, like the godlike superfood that it is. But most of all, you want to be toxin-free. And how do we do that? Well, that's where detoxing comes in. A detox or a cleanse will get rid of that backlog of toxins and nasty chemicals that are built up inside of you, weighing you down. It's amazing we're all still able to function, really, carrying all this extra weight. Um, but we do function. And maybe that's because we don't really need to cleanse. You know, maybe we don't need to go on a two-week booty detox, drinking tea laced with laxative that, yes, will flush out your system, but maybe not in the way you'd hoped. Um, in fact, our bodies have their own systems in place to deal with this. That's what the guys are for, you know, your liver and your kidneys. They do that job for you already, because believe it or not, our bodies are actually quite clever. Um, <clears throat> so what's my problem? Uh, my problem isn't with healthy eating. It's when healthy eating becomes clean eating. And I have a serious problem with that. One of the problems I have is language. Um, the wellness and clean eating industry are masters at demonizing entire food groups via language. All you have to do is look at how they describe sugar, or in particular at the moment gluten, which has become enemy number one for some reason. Um, it helps to create a really negative relationship with food. Food becomes a scary, toxic thing, and you must constantly be on your guard. Food can very easily become the enemy, which leads to all kinds of serious problems. And all of these champions of clean eating are guilty of it. All you have to do is look at their blogs, their social media, their philosophies, and the books that they're bringing out to see that. They're also predominantly marketed at young people who already have so much pressure on them for body image already. <clears throat> and it can be damaging. Uh, orthorexia it isn't an officially recognized medical term yet. But people are receiving treatment for it. It's an obsession with eating clean uh, to a point where you're cutting out more and more from your diet to a point where you're becoming malnourished and it becomes seriously harmful. And then when you dig a little deeper into some of the clean eating champs, things get a little scary. The Hemsley sisters, for example, are advocates of the GAPS diet. It's a strict eating regime or treatment that claims to cure autism, schizophrenia, and many other complex mental health and behavioral problems. Um, I have a serious issue when clean eating merges with medicine. The clean eating gurus become experts in areas they should be staying well clear from. Yes, having a healthy, balanced diet is beneficial to health, but it is not a cure-all. Thankfully, the backlash is well underway. You may have seen the Horizon program on the BBC a few weeks back, and there are also loads of articles coming out. Deliciously, Ella has removed all mention of clean eating from her website and social media. She hasn't changed the message or language she's using. She's just got rid of that label. Um, and then Davina McCall was on Saturday Kitchen a few weeks back, where she made the claim, sugar fuels cancer tumours. She went unchallenged and didn't provide any evidence of the things she was saying, all of which were well beyond her expertise. It's also worth noting that both Davina McCall and Deliciously Ella, Deliciously Ella have books out at the moment. Um, they probably want you to buy them. So with Ella distancing herself from clean eating and Davina McCall making these claims, perhaps their motivation has something to do with that. Uh, we're living in a world of alternative facts now where no one needs to listen to experts. Claims can be made without evidence and go unchallenged. Clean eating is just one example of that. 
All you need to do is look at where not listening to experts has gotten us now to say that maybe it's not the best idea. Um, so to conclude, food is great, food is exciting, it is not the enemy. If you need dietary advice, maybe consult a qualified dietitian, do your research, don't take anecdotal evidence as concrete proof and question things, especially if the information is coming from someone trying to tell you something. And lastly, balance, moderation and patience and maybe exercise a bit and you'll probably be all right. Thank you.